Hi folks, so this week we took our humanoid model that we rigged last week and we're going to do a little bit of uh, painting on it and then we're going to animate it a little bit. So let's get into that. The um, model is here, rigged from before. So before we uh, do any animation, we're just going to put a bit of a, a quick bit of um, texture painting onto this. So before we can texture paint it, we need to un UV unwrap it. So because it's now in under the armature here, I'm just going to make sure that I select it. Uh, object mode. Select. Make sure you select the character and not the armature. I'm going to select the, car the character here, and then we go into edit mode and select all. Eight select all if it's not already selected, which it is, and then we're going to give it a UV. Smart UV project, okay. And that's going to create a UV map for us here. Because we're going to be uh, painting this with the fill tools and stuff, and they tend to bleed over the edges of these little islands a little bit, we're going to just go down here to the island margin and just increase that, just by to this to a small amount, and that'll just keep the islands apart from each other, prevent the colors from one part of the model ble bleeding into another, in a way that we don't really want it to do. So that's our UV map done. So let's go to texture paint mode. And we're going to hide the armature at this point, just to put it out of the way. Just click in the eye symbol there, just to hide it. And let's have a look at the material for our humanoid. We don't have one at all, which is why it's showing up in this kind of purpley color. So let's click new here in the material panel to create a new material. We'll call it humanoid as well. And down here in base color, we'll click the little dot and associate it with an image texture. And then we'll create, click here to create a new image texture. We'll call that also humanoid. And it's going to be fits filled with black, so that's OK. And that means now the model is completely black. Over here on this side of the texture paint window, there's no image open, so we're just going to click to select the humanoid image as well. And now we've got the model on this side and the image on that side. So let's start to um, switch over on this side into back into edit mode and let's uh, just switch on x-ray and let's just start doing box selection on the bits that we want to paint and so let's box over select over the head because I have x-ray on it's going to select the front and back at the same time and then holding shift down as well I'm going to box select over the hands on either side so now we've got the the hands masked out I might have gone a little bit far on this. I'm just going to switch X-ray off and just knock out maybe a couple of those there. Kind of a bit too, kind of select a bit too much on this side. I think. Uh, actually, no, it's it's, it's, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's actually it's actually the same as the other side. Okay, so now that we've selected these to be the kind of the flesh colored portions, we can go back to texture paint mode and we'll make sure to select this button here. This one is the mask, paint mask. And this means now any painting we do are only going to be on the bits that we've selected inside edit mode. So let's select the, the fill bucket color there and pick a nice kind of flesh like color somewhere in that kind of pinky orange light colored zone that'll do I guess. And we'll just click on the click on the model there to apply it. Then we'll return to edit mode again. Now we'll just box select the lower half of the body where the pants would pants would be, pants and feet. We're just gonna do all that in one go. Again, switch back to, to texture paint mode. Then we're gonna select a color for the pants. We're gonna go with kind of a jeans blue, and I'm just gonna darken it up a bit, something like something like that. And again, fill that in. It's a little bit light. Dark, maybe pick a slightly darker shade. Try again. Better. I like that more. Then back to edit mode again. Oh, sorry, I made it. I goofed. I forgot. I switched off X ray and I forgot to switch it back on again. So that means the jeans color didn't make it all the way through. So let's just do that again quickly. Box select here. Now the front and back are selected, which is what I wanted. Go back to texture paint mode. 
and again just click to fill now it's going to fill the back as well that's good then back to edit mode I'm going to look from the side view this time and I'm just going to box select over the feet area to pick out the two feet and I'm going to go back to texture paint mode and I'm going to pick a kind of maybe an orangey color for trainers something like that and fill I'm just going to switch off the mask now just so we can see what the character looks like switch off x-ray 2 not looking so bad so but I think it would be nice too if I just hand painted a couple of little basic features on the character's face so I'm going to go to the draw mode and I'm going to bring the size the radius here of the draw brush down to something quite small like six or seven it's hard to drag it that low so I'm just going to maybe type six into the box there six that's quite small and I'm going to pick just a black color let's go to the front view again and just zoom in on the face and let's do a really basic hand drawn little pair of eyebrows little pair of eyes and a smiley mouth and if I want to maybe I could also paint a little bit of kind of hair on there so maybe I will select a kind of shade of brown or something like that a darker shade of brown increase the size of the brush here and again I'm just going to start to kind of paint something that looks like hair onto the head attempt to leave them with pattern baldness but I won't <laughs> it's weird but it'll do quite nicely all right so let's go back to layout again we're just going to go to material preview this time so we can see the uh, so we can see the, um, the character I'm just going to give this a, a save because I had the last day if people remember I had a great habit of losing the um, losing that texture I'm just gonna actually make sure as well that here external data that pack is switched on so that will save the texture into the blender file and save again so now I shouldn't lose that texture which I kept doing which is really driving me mad alright so let's look to actually doing some animation so I'm going to pull up the uh, timeline here a bit just so we can see it you don't need to do that but it just helps me show thing, point at things and I'm going to make the armature visible again so now we're going to select the armature instead and going to go to pose mode instead so I'm going to start the character with the arms down by the side then I'm going to have the character move one of their their right arm out and kind of at the same time turning their head towards it and then bring the arm pointing forward while they also turn their view forward and then move the move back to the arms down by the side kind of um, style so First thing I'm going to do in pose mode is I'm going to select this first shoulder bone and I'm just going to rotate it, hit R to rotate it, just so it flattens, just goes more straight across and same thing with this one, R and just flatten it because it's easier to bring the arms down by the side when that's those kind of sh shoulder bones are st straight out. So now I'm going to pick this upper arm and R and I'm going to bring it down until the arm kind of set rests by the character's side and again R on this side and do the same. So now we've got uh, the, oh, yeah, doesn't matter. Actually, sorry, let me undo that for a second. The last day, actually, I, I just extolled the virtues of capturing this T-pose in the pose library. So actually, before I move on, I will just do that so that you can always get this T-pose back because it's very hard to recover if once you've posed away from it. And it might be, it's useful sometimes to be able to get back to this kind of un, undeformed kind of orientation. 
So I'm going to A to select all the bones. I'm going to come over here to this um, skeleton kind of tab here. And under Pose Library, I'm going to hit New to make a new pose library. I'm going to hit Plus to create a new pose. And I'm just going to rename it to T-Pose. So now that pose is saved. And if I then make any kind of change to this, let's say rotate that arm, I can at any stage click on that T-Pose and recover it. Actually, it'll only recover for the, let's say hit all, it'll only recover for the bones I've selected. So at any stage I can get back this pose. So that's just a good thing to do. It's just useful to have it saved. All right, so let's go back to reposing this model the way I suggested. So R to move the shoulder up on both sides and R to move the arms down on both sides. If I hadn't moved the shoulders up, the, he would look very kind of flat. His shoulders would look very flat here. So this moving them up like this helps. All right, so let's select all, select all the bones. And let's, the same as we made a keyframe before when we were doing our other animations, we just hit I and we'll select, save the location and rotation of all of those bones. And you can see the keyframe here appears in the uh, in the timeline. So let's now move forward on the timeline to maybe 20 frames. And let's take the arm here and we're going to rotate it. So it kind of points more or less out to the straight, out to the side from the character. And then we're just going to rotate the view so we're looking more or less straight down on the head bone here. And again, so that when I rotate, it's going to rotate around that bone, around the kind of center of that bone. It doesn't have to be absolutely precise, but that's roughly just by looking down this, this line, this is the way it'll rotate. And just hit R to rotate the head over. So he's kind of looking over to the right a bit. All right, so that's, so that's another pose. That's the next pose. So let's hit A again to select all the bones. I to keyframe it, location and rotation. Now let's move to 40 seconds. Now we want to rotate the head back to the front. So let's again just change the view. So again, we're looking down straight down that head bone, more or less. And just R again to rotate the head back, to, so looking more or less to the front. And then from a top view, just switch to top view, select that arm, upper arm bone and rotate. So that's pointing almost straight out. And we want to just straighten the arm. So I'm going to pick the lower arm bone and again rotate that as well. So it's kind of pointing straight. So now the character is pointing kind of straight ahead and looking straight ahead. So again, I'm going to A to select all those bones and I and location rotation to keyframe them. And then the last move here in this sequence is just to return back to this pose with the arms down by the side. So we could try and move up here and then do the reposing, move the arm back and then move it down and so on. But that's no point in doing that. We already have a perfect pose here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this first keyframe. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it. And then I'm going to drag it over to the right. Now you can see that as I drag it here, you see there's a solid line between the two of those. Basically that's saying nothing is changing between the two of these, that it's sort of constant between the two of those because the two poses are exactly the same. So it's, it's, just an, it's just kind of a way of showing you that between here and here, there's no movement at all. But as soon as I drag it past that other keyframe, you see that solid line disappears because now it would have to move from the first pose to the second pose and then back to this copy of the first pose. So I'm just gonna drag this one out to 60 and drop it there. All right, so let's drag this back, hit the space bar and let's have a look. Yeah. All right, so he's doing it. So we've, we've animated the character. Now, what can you do then if you wanna speed? Let's say the animation was too fast or too slow. What can you do? Well, you can hit A to select all the keyframes or you can drag a box around some of them, or pick individual ones and shift click. It's the same kind of way of interacting with these as you would with other things in Blender. And you can scale by hitting S, and you can drag and scale these. Actually, oh, I noticed it scales around wherever the timeline is. So actually, I'm gonna put the timeline back to one. So when I scale these now, I didn't notice that the last day, I can stretch these now so they stretch over the whole animation. But of course, the effect of that is it's going to be much slower. But it's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. I think what I didn't show the last day too is that, let's say if I hit S here again and scale it back, let's say maybe it's just 200, we thought that was the speed. You can 
end the animation here at 200 as well just by changing this changing this end here and that's that's as long as the animation will run for then you don't have to run for 250 or you can run for more than 250 it's up to you all right so that's our character animated very simple little animation but it works so now i thought now that we've got our character animating it would be nice to add a camera which can follow that character around again i'm just going to hide the character's armature just to again give a little bit of clarity to what's going on here Notice that I've now no longer selected the arm, the armature's hidden, so the ar the animation continues, but actually I no longer see the keyframes down here because the, the armature's hidden, but that's fine, they're not gone, they're just hidden. So I'm gonna to return to object mode again and hide the, hide the armature. But again, as I say, the animation is still good. So, to do the camera, I decided we could do a manual camera and we could animate it, we've got a camera here. But I'm going to delete this camera, so I'm going to select it here and hit X and delete it. And instead I'm going to add a camera rig in, which is another, which is a rig now, like this is a rigged character. So it's poseable like a rig. That's a different way of working with the camera, it's a little bit easier. But before I do that, I'm going to add a new window up here, a new workspace. So I'm going to hit the plus here on this, sorry, let me do that again. I'm going to hit the plus here at the end, and I'm going to hit general and just choose layout, which is the same as this one for st at start for the start. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to rename it to camera. And if I go to the upper left hand side there, see until when the cursor turns to a cross and drag, I can split the window now into two. So I just split it roughly 50 50. And on this side, I'm going to say stick to camera, except we don't have one. I'll have to add a camera first. So We've got this camera set up, ready to go. So let's start, first of all, we've got to add in the camera rigs add-on. So down to preferences, edit, preferences, and go to add-ons and search for camera. And find this camera, add cameras rig and tick it to switch it on. It's a built-in one, you don't have to download anything. You just have to enable it. And when you do that, when you enable that and come back here and say, add, camera, you'll have a few more options apart from just camera. You'll have also dolly camera rig, crane camera rig, and 2D camera rig. We're just going to use a dolly camera rig here. So just hit dolly camera rig. And you can see it's added a camera in, but it's rigged. It's got all these handles now that you can use to pose it, which is what we want. So now that we've got a camera in the scene again, I'm just going to hit the camera view here to lock this view to the camera. So now as we move the camera here, we'll see the result here makes it easier to, to pose the camera here in this view while keeping an eye on what the camera can see over on this side at the same time. That makes it easy to do. So make sure we've got the camera, the dolly rig selected, which we do. And we're going to go to pose mode. And let's select that base bone here in the camera rig. And we're going to move it along the horizontal. So G to move, Shift, Z, to make sure it doesn't go up or down, that it just goes horizontal. And we're just going to pull it back from the character a bit so we can see maybe most of the character. And then we're going to grab this bone here at the top and we're going to hit G and we're just going to move that bone until we're kind of looking directly at the, directly at the character there. So that's our first, first position. So hit A to select all the bones and again I, location, rotation, to set a keyframe for that first camera position. Now I'm gonna get on to drag the timeline up. So again then maybe I'm gonna to move to halfway through there halfway through the animation here to about hundred frames. I'm gonna select that base bone again. I'm gonna G shift Z and I'm gonna move the camera over to this side of the character. Gonna select this bone again and G and move it back so it's looking again at the character. Actually, that's hard to do. I'm going to go to the top view and then hit G. There we go, that's easier. And just point it back towards the character. So that's, yeah, much easier to do in a top view. And that's our second position. So I'm going to hit A and I'm going to hit I and location rotation. So I'm going to, so the camera is going to move from the right hand side of the character to the left hand side of the character. And then we're going to finish up with a close in on the character. So again, move to the end of the timeline, select this base bone, 
G, Shift, Z, and just move in on the character's face to finish. And select all the bones, A, I, location, rotation, and that gives us our camera move. So that's our completed animation, camera and character. So all that remains now is for us to actually render this out as an animation. So how do we do that? Let's go to the output properties panel here. And by default, I think it wants to uh, use, I think this is probably set, it's certainly the resolution of my screen. I think it's probably the resolution of your screen by default. That's kind of big, so I'm gonna just knock that down to 25% because I want it to render quickly. It's a good idea to render at a low percentage early on, and then maybe at your final version, you can render a full res, but it'll take longer. You can set frame rates here and stuff, that's fine, but I would leave all of the rest of that alone for now. And then down here, you're going to want to switch the file format from PNG, which would, if you did it, would give you a pile of um, single images for every frame, which you don't want. You want a movie file. Change that to FFMPG video, MPEG video. And that's going to make a movie file. And then here where it's got the folder, just click on the that button at the end, pick a folder that you're happy for. I already got it set to C temp on my hard drive, but pick a folder that you're happy for the movie to be saved to and hit accept. And then we're going to go to render, render animation. And the animation will start to be rendered one frame at a time, making our little movie file as it goes. And you can see there the, the, where we're getting to. So there you are, 200 frames. Oh, sorry, I'm pointing at a window you can't see because uh, it's popped up on top of the other window. But basically, yeah, it's, it's finished the rendering. It popped up another little window, and then now it's finished the rendering. So um, I'm just going to go maybe to temporarily to add a video editing window. And I'm going to just look for that video so we can see it. Just drop it into the timeline here. That's not it. That is it. And let's just uh, let's just watch it play. This is our video playing. Okay, cool. That's it. So I hope you have fun with that uh, and try different things. You can m pose and move the character any way you want. Um, it'd be interesting to see what you might come up with. And uh, we'll see you next week for our last session. Thanks everybody. Cheers. Bye.